In this color grading tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can create this rich, moody style wedding look to your photos just using Lightroom Classic. And I'm going to start right now. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and choose a photo. Now this moody style look works with quite a few different types of photos. I'm going from an autumnal urban style photo, uh, which I did at a recent wedding. But again, experiment, see what this specific look goes for your photos. It may work for some, may not work for others. So this is the photo that I'm working with today. And it was taken in London at an old, almost abandoned church. And we did kind of like a wedding style photo shoot there. So what we're gonna do, Go ahead, open up the develop panel on the right hand side and we're going to drop down to where you can see it says basic. Now inside basic, first thing you want to do, go to your profile. Now you've got Adobe Color. I like going down to Adobe Portrait when I'm working with portrait photos and then use Adobe Landscape when we're working with landscape photos. I find the skin tones look sometimes a little bit better with Adobe Portrait and then sometimes the sky looks a little bit more saturated when you're using Adobe Landscape. But again, experiment, see what works for you. So in this specific case, again, I was shooting on manual white balance. I always recommend doing that, especially if you're doing a gallery, if you've got lots and lots of photos, just so you know you're starting from a set white balance for all of your photos. And I think it makes the colors overall and the white balance look a lot more consistent across your entire gallery. But in this specific case, what I'm going to do is go to the temperature here, go from 5700 Kelvin and jump up to 6000 Kelvin. And with the tint, I'm going to leave that alone because uh, I think it looks correct. Uh, but again, it experiment, see what works for you. Again, your white balance may be off depending on the type of lighting you were shooting in. Okay, so let's go down and firstly go to our exposure. Now our exposure, what we want to do is actually increase this quite a lot in this specific case. I'm gonna increase it by around 0.8, but again, we can go back to that if we find it's a bit too bright or a bit too dark. Okay, so then we'll go to the uh, contrast here. I'm gonna increase the contrast by around about 30%. I quite like this strong contrast look when we're going for this moody style. Now, in this specific example, if we go over to the shadows here, oh, that's way too zoomed in. Let's zoom into 200% instead. They are quite dark. And if we go over to the highlights here, they are quite bright. So let's try and balance those. So we're gonna go to the highlights here. We're gonna drop those down all the way to about 60, I'm gonna say about 70% in this specific case. And then with the shadows here, we're gonna increase those by around about the same amount. So we'll go for plus 70. Now, as you can see, if we've, well, because we've added in contrast, we've still got a nice contrasty look throughout the entire photo. So then what we're gonna do is gonna go to our whites. We're gonna add in plus 10. And we go to the blacks here, and we're gonna go for minus 10. Sometimes if you decrease the highlights too far and increase the shadows too far, it can create this matte look where the whites look gray and the blacks look almost like this dark gray instead of black. So what it will do is basically adding in some white will prevent that clipping problem. So it won't make the whites won't look too gray or flat and the blacks will look nice and rich. So what we'll do is go to the texture, clarity and dehaze. So what we're gonna do is for texture, we're just gonna increase that by 10. Now with portrait style photos, I actually like decreasing the clarity, not by much, but around about 10%. What that'll do is it'll just soften up those skin tones, especially if they're quite prominent within the image. And then with dehaze here, I'm just gonna simply go for a small amount. I'm gonna go for 5%. Now with vibrance and saturation, I'm gonna leave the saturation alone because I'm finding it's a little bit too strong, especially for the highlights and shadows. So I'm gonna go for the vibrance here, which predominantly affects the mid-tone colors. I'm gonna increase that by around 15. That'll add a little bit more brightness and a little bit more vibrancy and saturation to the foliage without adding it to the kind of darker gray areas that you can see on the brick wall behind. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn off the basics panel and let's go ahead and open up hue, saturation, and luminance. Now hue, saturation, and luminance control the type of color, the amount of color, and also the brightness of that color. And we can control them using the color band. So as you can see, it goes from red all the way down to magenta, and then we've got saturation, which again controls the amount of color, and then we've got luminance, which controls the brightness. So let's go ahead and open up hue first. Now in hue, we're not gonna make too many changes. So we're gonna go to the red, we're gonna go for minus five, and then we're gonna go for oranges, we're also gonna go for minus five. What that'll do is sometimes I find skin tones can look quite yellow. So with in doing the reds and oranges, we're adding a little bit more red and a little bit more magenta. And I find it balances the skin tones a lot more evenly. Okay, so we'll go to the yellows here. Now yellows will make quite a big change. We'll go for minus 25. 
In this specific photo, uh, there's a lot of yellows found in the foliage. That's the green tree, and you can see kind of the ivy coming down. So we're making it a little bit more of an orangey look, adding a little bit more mood to that color. And it's the same situation with green. They're kind of half and half, really. So we'll go for minus 25 in this case. And as you can see, we've made it a little bit more orange. So if I do the before, and the after, we've added a little bit more of an orangey look, which really works for this moody look that we're going for in this photo. So what we're gonna do, not gonna change anything else in this photo, so we're gonna leave the rest of the colors alone. We're gonna go ahead and go over to saturation. So with saturation, again, we go for red, we're gonna go for minus 10. With the oranges, we're gonna go for minus 20. For the yellows, we're gonna go for minus 25. And then the last we've got is green, we're gonna go for minus 50. So we're really removing that color from the foliage and we're just overall reducing some saturation in some of the skin tones and the rest of the photo. But again, leaving the other four color bands alone. And then we're gonna to go to luminance here. What we're gonna do is go to the yellows. So we're gonna skip out the skin tones. We're not gonna worry about the luminance in this specific example. We're gonna go for minus 10 in the yellows. So again, that's just affecting the foliage. And then the green here, we're gonna go for minus 20. So we're darkening that foliage, bringing out the kind of vibrancy of the couple that we can see in the, the foreground. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to go to color grading. Now, color grading in this specific example is really going to help. We're going to create a little more of a consistent look across your entire gallery. I love using color. If you want to know more about the color grading panel, I've got my masterclass series here, which really goes in depth of what you can do. So what we're going to do is go open up our color grading. We're going to go over to the shadows first. Now, inside the shadows, we're going to go for... Mm, Let's see, let's go for more of an orangey tone. So we're gonna go for 20 in this specific example. And then what we're gonna do is add in saturation. Now what this will do is if we look just in the shadow areas, if we go ahead and increase lots, you can see it's adding in that kind of orangey hue. But we wanna make it a little bit more subtle. We don't wanna go for a complete sepia tone look. So we're gonna go for 10%. Then what we're gonna do is gonna go to the mid tones and kind of emphasize that a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is gonna go, I'm probably gonna go for 30 in this specific case, make it a little bit more orangey than red. And then we're gonna go ahead and add it in again. So I'm gonna go for 15 in this specific example. So what I can do is show you the before and the after of just the color grading panel. And it adds this nice warm orange hue to it. Now I'm not gonna add it in the white because we've got a wedding dress. We don't wanna make it look like an off-white wedding dress. We wanna make it look white. So we're not gonna affect the highlights. We're just affecting the mid-tones and we're just affecting the shadows with inside the color grading panel. Now, if you're finding the mid-tones still a little bit too dark, we can actually go to the luminance here and we can go ahead and brighten that up. I wouldn't brighten it any more than 50, so I'm gonna go for 30 in this specific case, but you can experiment and see what works for your specific photo. Again, your photo might be a little bit too dark or a little bit too bright, so you can either use the exposure panel or the luminance panel within the color grading panel to fix that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is next, we're gonna go down to lens correction. Now, make sure remove chromatic aberration is turned on as well as enable profile corrections. Now, again, I'm using my Sigma 35mm f1.4 prime lens. Really like this lens for weddings, but you may find that your other lens have optical problems like having a little bit fringing, like the purple or green fringing. So make sure both of these buttons are ticked to fix any distortion issues, any vignetting issues with your lens. Now, if you do have any other problems, you can always go into the manual mode. You can really zoom in and see if you've got any chromatic aberration and you can remove it using the color picker tool. But in this specific example, I actually am quite happy with the image. And again, it's the same with your distortion and vignetting. You can actually fix that there. Okay, so we're gonna turn off a lens correction and we're gonna go down to effects. Now in effects, we're gonna add a very subtle post cropping vignette. Again, the couple are in the center of the image. So we can add in a vignette to darken the exterior to really bring attention to the foreground where the bride and groom are standing. So what we're gonna do is go to the amount here and we're gonna go ahead and go for minus 15. As you can see, we're just ever so slightly darkening, bringing more focus to the center of the image. And the last thing we'll do is gonna go open up calibration tool. Now I'm finding it's a little bit undersaturated after we've done a few of those changes. So what we're gonna do is use the calibration tool to fix that. So we're gonna go to the red primaries, the green primaries and the blue primaries, I'm gonna add in 15. So we go for red there, saturation, 
we're going to go for saturation of the green primaries. And the last deep, we're going to go for saturation of the blue primaries. Now, if you want to know more about the calibration tool, because it's an incredibly powerful tool within Lightroom Classic, the first thing I think it gets majorly overlooked, make sure to go to this playlist here. I've got a full masterclass series, which will go over a few of the other panels, but specifically also calibration. Okay, so I am pretty much happy with this. Now you might find that after all of those changes, your photo still might look either too bright or too dark. So like I was saying, let's go back to the basics panel here, go to your exposure and we can either brighten it or you can darken it. I find around about for this specific image, uh, I'm gonna go for around about just over a stop. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1 stops as you can see here. But overall, I am really happy with this specific image. So what I might do is the last thing I might do is just go to the masking panel here. I'm finding the kind of sky here is a little bit too bright, I think. So I'm gonna go to my linear gradient. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to darken it ever so slightly by around about 0.5. I'm going to do the same with the floor as well. So I'm going to darken the floor here, but not by as much. So probably minus 0 0.25, go for something like so. And then what I want to do is kind of brighten the bride and groom a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select subject. Hopefully Lightroom will do a good job. As you can see, it has done. So I'm going to just go to an exposure here. I'm just going to brighten them up just by 0.2 of a stop. And that's pretty much it. I love using masking just for that little pop of color afterwards. So what I can do is show you the before, and then I can show you the after. And what I can do is show you the rest of the gallery, a few other photos that I've taken at the same time with this specific preset enabled. I really like this moody look, especially if you're shooting more with foliage in the background. Maybe you're shooting at autumn time. Maybe you've got the sunset involved. It really works adding this nice moody tone to your photos. So write down in the comments if this specific effect worked for you. Again, here is the before and here is the after. Well, thank you for sticking to the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. Now, of course, if you want to learn any more about Lightroom Classic, I've got my masterclass playlist just up here. Or if you're more interested in just learning how to color grade in different styles, then I've got my color grading playlist just up here. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.